Today you'll be learning the basics in becoming an effective tutor at Angelo State University. We will be going over the 12 steps of the tutor cycle, the role of the tutor, basic questioning techniques, and breaking the dependency cycle. First, you need to be familiar with the 12 steps of the tutor cycle. 1. Greet and build rapport. Enthusiastic greeting goes a long way towards creating a positive learning experience for the 2D. Spend a couple minutes getting to know the student to make him or her feel at ease. Learn and remember the student's name. 2. Identify the task. You can't hit a target that you can't see. In the same way, if you don't know in what way the student needs help, you cannot provide the specific help he or she needs. Knowing the student needs help in chemistry probably will not be enough. You will need to know the specific problem area, such as balancing equations or periodic trends. 3. Break task into parts, process, and content. Break the task down into small manageable steps through which you will lead the 2D. Determine if the student needs help with the process of answering the question or understanding the content that will allow him or her to answer the question. 4. Organize students' materials. If the materials to answer the question are at hand and neatly organized, the student will be more prepared to answer the question. This is also a study skill that will help the student in other classes. 5. Set agenda for tutoring session. Lay out how you and the tutee will proceed through the tutoring session. Again, a study agenda is a study skill that will help the student succeed in coursework beyond the problem at hand. 6. Address the task. This will be a large part of the tutoring session. This is when you will actually help the student with the problem at hand. Step 7 and 8. Student summary of content and process. Have the student summarize how the two of you went about solving his or her problem. 9. Confirmation. Let the student know if the preceding summaries were correct. 10. What's next? Find out if the student needs help with another area or has another question. 11. Suggestion for the next session. Always give the student some sort of homework. Let the 2D know if he should do more practice questions, read the textbook, organize his notes, or etc. before coming back to the tutoring or SI. 12. Close and thanks. Tell the student thank you and provide some positive feedback. Complete and turn in the tutoring form into the office assistant. Next, let's explore the role of the tutor. The role of the tutor here at the ASU Tutor Center is to facilitate independent learning. So essentially what we do is we not only teach course content, but we also teach the process of learning that content. So essentially, instead of just giving students advice and practical measures to apply to that specific course that they come in for help. Um, we also want to give them skills to take to their next courses. So we're basically building foundations of memorization techniques, questioning techniques, study skills, and so on. So essentially what we do here is we try to guide students towards a better academic future. Now we'll go into the questioning techniques. You should be familiar with the Socratic method. The Socratic method is a questioning technique that involves a progression of questions that leads students to a logical conclusion. Using a teaching by asking approach, as opposed to telling, the Socratic method forces students to think for themselves and ultimately teaches them how to formulate answers to their own questions. Let's continue with questioning techniques, but now focusing on open-ended questions. An open-ended question is a question that requires more thought and more words than just a yes or no question. Um, tutors are actually using these kind of questions to force the student to verbalize their own ideas. Um, it's a very good tool to make the student become independent learners. And the final aspect of questioning techniques, the dependency cycle. The dependency cycle is a pattern of learned behavior that allows students to remain dependent upon another for learning. This is broken into three steps. Step 1. Redirect the question. When a student asks a question, your first response should always be to throw it back to the student by asking, what do you think? 
Step 2. Wait time. 30 seconds. Be sure to provide the student with ample time to formulate an answer in his or her own words. Step 3. Check for understanding. After the appropriate wait time, if the student continues to struggle with the answer, you may include others in the group by saying, can anyone help with this answer? Let's look at what we covered today. First, the 12 steps of the tutor cycle. Next was the role of the tutor. Finally, the questioning techniques, where we discuss the Socratic method, open-ended questions, and breaking the dependency cycle. Now you're on the road to becoming an excellent tutor for Angela State University's Tutor Center.